Take two, Dillinger and Teen Spirit. It's all fun in the sun on this week, so oh my god, this week was for the win. <laughs> Welcome back for another heart-pounding edition of the internet's number one rated video game news show. Oh my god, this week was for the win. I'm your host, Luke Brown. Yes, thank you, thank you. You might remember me from the Collector's Edition show, the New Releases show, or as the humorless android who couldn't learn to be funny if he tried. It's been a fairly slow week, but we've scraped the bottom of the barrel to give you another week's worth of video game news you couldn't possibly live without. <clears throat> this week, Take-Two executive Strauss Zelnick responded to his questions about if and when Grand Theft Auto V would be announced with this statement. We're not going to announce it. We're not going to announce when we're going to announce it, and we're not going to announce the strategy about announcing it or about when we're going to announce it either, or about the announcement strategy surrounding the announcement of the strategy. Are there any other questions? <laughs> this comment came one day after a three-year-old lawsuit related to the Grand Theft Auto San Andreas hot coffee scandal was settled for $20 million. I didn't think anyone still gave a shit about sexual, sexually? I didn't think anyone gave a shit about sexually explicit minigame that is now over four years old, but apparently people just can't stop talking about the goddamn thing. In addition to the settlement, the lawsuit revealed that Take-Two actually knew about the scandalous content at the time of San Andreas' release, but pushed the game out the door anyway because they simply could not financially afford to delay the game. Take-Two had previously lied to investors, retailers, and the ESRB, claiming that the adult content was created by modders and not actually included on the disc. Of course, if you actually believe that, you're probably a fucking idiot. <laughs> At any rate, I hope that the settlement of this lawsuit means that we can finally stop hearing about this hot coffee bullshit and move on. I mean, it's been four years, people. Who gives a shit? It's not like it was a baby rape minigame or something. Hot coffee featured two consenting adults having sex. Big fucking deal. In hindsight, the whole thing worked out pretty damn well for Take-Two, since stocks soared, San Andreas remained in headlines long after its lease, release, and the company had enough money to make one of the best games of 2008. Now, of course, people won't get off Strauss Zelnick's nuts about the next game in the series. Remember, kids, when in doubt, just include really explicit content in all of your endeavors, and you're sure to succeed. John Dillinger's grandnephew is a real winner. Jerry Scalf, a self-made hundred heir claiming to be the grandson of Dillinger's half-sister, is looking to take EA to court for millions and millions of dollars. The suit stems from the Godfather to the game, where there is a Tommy gun called the Dillinger. In what has to be the world's most frivolous lawsuit since the woman who tried to sue Quaker cereal over the fact that Crunchberries weren't an actual fruit, <laughs> Mr. Scalf, as head of Dillinger LLC, is claiming he has complete and total rights to the name Dillinger and any uses thereof. Also integrity. Well, that's one thing. While I find it absolutely ridiculous that anyone thinks they have the rights to a word or name, what's even more ridiculous is that he thinks the Dillinger name is worth millions of dollars. I mean, Christ, Jerry, couldn't even be bothered to change your last name to Dillinger, so it must not mean all that much to you. Anyhow, this guy's had more than his 15 minutes in the spotlight, so it's time to move on to more pressing matters. If you're still on the Guitar Hero side of things this generation, you probably already know that Nirvana frontman and NRA enthusiast Kurt Cobain is in Guitar Hero 5. <laughs> There's a small amount of outrage around the decision for people to speak for the artist post-mortem. That, of course, means after they're dead. Mostly stemming from the ability to have the non-conformist singer belt out Billy Squire's Lonely as the Night or No Doubt's Ex-Girlfriend. This mashup pales in comparison to Activision's previous attempts at bringing dead celebrities into the game. Who can forget Princess Diana and her Mach 5 Mercedes in Vigilante 8? <laughs> Michael Jackson's cameo in the game based on Dancing with the Stars. Too soon. Perhaps you remember Jeff Goldblum's appearance in the all-too-transparent knockoff of Jurassic Park, Jurassic Hunter? And of course, who could forget DJ AM and DJ Hero? Oh. Anyway, who cares? For all we know, Kurt would have loved the crap out of fake plastic guitars. I mean, perhaps more disturbing is the fact that people are actually buying Guitar Hero 5 instead of learning real instruments, putting together a band, hitting the big time, getting addicted to drugs, not being able to deal with their sudden celebrity, then killing themselves instead of manning up. Because we all know that's what Kurt would have really wanted. Good night, everybody! Jekyll means dead. <laughs>